Welcome back. We are here looking at the U.S. indices and the big tech stocks in the United States. And this is going to be my daily forecast for Monday, January 11, 2021. If you'd like to support our channel, you're welcome to hit the subscribe button down here in the corner. Hit the like button and the bell button to see our newest videos. And you're welcome to join us over at Patreon, where you can get access to our full technical analysis, our signal service, and also our online trades and courses. So the link is down below. You're very welcome. So we'll start by looking at the uh, uh, S&P 500. And as you can see, we continue our rally. We are at 3,824 at this current stage, and we are basically at the all-time highs. So the question is whether or not we manage to continue from here. I would say probably one more day, maybe. That is really stretching it. The main reason why I say that is because we are technically getting overstretched here. You can see here in the Bollinger Band, we have been three days, consecutive days, outside of the Bollinger Band in the daily chart. And usually that is a massive warning for this market. You can see back here when we were outside the Bollinger Band, we fell from that point to this point. That is roughly a fall of 3.6%. And the other big fall that we have was over here when we went outside. We fell all from the, this point down to the lower part of the Bollinger Band. That is 10% fall in the in the um, in the S&P 100. The same goes for here. We went outside of the bullish band in the daily chart and we fell roughly 8.9%. So this could be a warning. Um, there was a lot of more not a lot more volatility back here uh, and a lot more uncertainty. Uh, we have much more certainty at this point and therefore we probably won't have this enormous fall as we had in the past. We know that Democrats will take control uh, in January 20, and that after that, there will be additional stimulus and so on. Probably as not as big as they uh, want it, and due to uh, some politicians basically objecting in the, in, in the Democratic Party. Um, and therefore, we may, not, we may see additional stimulus, but not uh, $2,000 checks that they were talking about. But we will have more stability in the market. There will be more, um, more control. And basically, that it won't, that's what the market likes. It likes when there is stability. We can just see, look what happened when basically Biden was announced the winner of the US election. We went from the bottom here all the way to the top here, roughly an increase in one and a half week of 12.7% in the S&P 500. So that is basically what stability um, can get you. And since then, we have just been gradually going higher. And at this point, we are getting a little bit overstretched. And therefore, I'm, I'm, I think that we are going to see a pullback, not an aggressive pullback where we basically fall off a cliff, but a gradual pullback in three, four trading days back towards the middle of the Bollinger Band, roughly at the 20 exponential moving average, and that's a fall of 2.7%. If you go a little bit lower than that, uh, similar to this fall here, then we're talking about a fall roughly 3 to 3.5%. Technical indicators, um, on the other hand, are still looking bullish. MACD is bullish, does the, the RSI is bullish, does uh, CCI is bullish, does the casting is bullish. So there's not indication yet that we are going to fall but we are getting overstretched we are at 67 here in the rsi but this is basically the big worry that i have for this market that's the reason why i haven't entered this market because usually when this market gets out of sight of the bullish band this market tends to fall quite drastically towards the middle or the bottom of the bullish band so you can also look at the weekly chart we can also see that we are getting barely overstretched in the weekly chart we are um, overbought we are also getting very close to the top of the bullish band here in the in the weekly chart and therefore i'm saying yes it is probably going to have one or maximum two more trading days where this will continue growing but we're not talking about five uh, one or two percent growth we're talking about 0 0.2 0 0.34 and when you see that slowing of of uh, of, uh, of buying you that is also an additional warning sign that we are about to turn around so let's look at the dow jones so very similar here probably not as over uh, overextended as the s&p 500 is but uh, it is 
showing signs of um, slowing down. So we are most likely going to turn around here, head back towards the middle, uh, the 20 exponential week average, and that's a fall of roughly 2.19%. If you fall similar to this, fairly lower uh, between the 20 and the 40 exponential, then we're talking about a fall of roughly 3%. You can see also here, we are outside of the Bollinger Band. We tried to pull back, then uh, um, pull back here, but then we rallied and now we're again outside of the Bollinger Band. Technical indicators otherwise are looking very bullish at this point. MACD is crossing the signal line, the RSI is at 66 and uh, it's fairly flat. The CCI is still way above zero and we also have a stochastic here that is very bullish. But I would expect a pullback towards the middle. That's roughly minimum of 2.26%. So let's look at the NASDAQ. So NASDAQ is um, fairly the same. We had a rally here from the bottom here to the top. That's roughly 4.26%. We are outside of the Bollinger Band here in the daily chart. And usually when that happens, you can see it here we fell in this case roughly 9.8%. Here, when we were outside, we fell additional 12.4%. So it doesn't happen very often. Uh, you could also have minor pullbacks similar to this one and then continue the rally. So this is a fall of roughly 1.5%. Um, this one was a fall of roughly 3%. So if you, it, it kind of depends how far you go, how extended you are going to go. Some of these companies that are in the in this market that is basically driving this is almost pure speculations. I don't have to mention the company, but when you have very charismatic leaders, they can tend to drive up your your stock significantly, and that will also affect the Nasdaq. It's not purely the value of the company; it is technically speculation that is driving most of those gains and that never have never has an, a positive outcome you can get these rallies but then you have massive crashes so from the top top here to the middle of the bollinger band that's a fall of roughly three percent if you fall all the way to the bottom that's 5.6 percent so buying it here is not a good idea you should buy it when it's around the 20 exponential moving average or even better, in between the 20 and the 40 exponential moving average. So I don't think that we are going to see these kinds of fall, falls. There is going to be a lot more stability in the economy. More, uh, It will be more organized, more planned, and so on. If there is going to be more fiscal spending, more uh, engagement from the central banks, and so on. And we are going to see a continuation of... of um, of the, uh, technically this new bull run. So, of course, you could also make the argu argument that most of these companies are significantly overbought. And yes, they are. If you look at the PE ratio of m most of these companies, all from Apple, Microsoft, uh, and especially Tesla, where the PE ratio is above 1,000, usually when you consider uh, PE ratios, uh, one year ago, you were looking at PE ratios that if you saw a company with uh, 20 PE ratio, you would consider it a very expensive stock. Now you're looking at PE ratios, for example, for Tesla, that's about above 1,000. And that is just doesn't make any sense. So I am not the one that's trying to, uh, to um, say that we're going to have an apocalypse in the, in the stock market. I think we already had an apocalypse here in the stock market. market. And uh, and uh, now it's just pure liquidity that is basically running this. It's not not uh, companies' income. It's basically the liquidity that is driving this market, and it has for several years. This was basically also pure liquidity that was driving this market. So let's look at some of these tech stocks. We'll start by looking at Apple. So Apple had a uh, quite a nice run on on Friday session. We hit the lows here, roughly of 126, and then we continue this run. I am fairly skeptical of, of whether or not we manage to go higher here because I expect the, the NASDAQ to fall. And um, I also expect this stock to fall back towards the 20 at least before we go higher. 
So at this point, technical indicators are fairly mixed. They are still bearish, um, but some of them are turning around. So for example, the MACD is bearish, the RSI is flat, the, stochastic, the CCI is kind of flat at this point, and stochastic is bearish, but it's turning around. And here in the bullish band, we can see that we could go back to the top of the bullish band. So that means that we could increase roughly 3.3% before we get to these highs, um, and then we'll run into trouble like we did here. That is possible. Uh, we'll see. Um, I kind of have a feeling that we're going to see some kind of choppiness due to the fact that we most likely will see a fall in the in the in the Nasdaq. So we can see uh, we have uh, Amazon here. So Amazon has had troubles getting past the twenty exponential moving average. Technical indicators for Amazon stock are very quite dire at this point. You can see the MACD is very. Uh, bearish is it's getting close to the zero and that's a really bad sign for 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 the stock but we are very close to the 150 moving average right on here and i don't think that the stock is going to fall underneath the 20 the 150. so the closer this gets to the price level well the more bullish this will get so at this point we could see uh, if we manage to break above the 20 exponential, then we'll see a, a, a rally up towards these highs, and that's roughly 5%. And I wouldn't be surprised because this is one of the stocks that has basically been a sleeping giant for uh, quite a long time now. Um, yes, so um, so uh, if we manage to see the MACD turn around, the stochastic to turn around, then that is a really clear indication, especially if we break the 20 exponential uh, that we are going to go higher and uh, i think the maximum that will go is roughly the top here of of uh, of uh, 3350 or 5.27 percent we will also cross significantly over the bullish band then and then we'll have another pullback so let's look at microsoft so microsoft hit the bottom here just above the 50 150 moving average and then rallied so we have rallied 3.92 percent and at this point, I think we are going to head towards the top here, which is also the top of the Bollinger Band. That is uh, another gain of 3.53%. Uh, so that's where we'll run into major resistance. You can also see that the technical indicators, most of them are turning around, which is very good. MACD is still underneath the signal line. RSI is turning around. CCI is turning around. The stochastic is turning around. And we're also above the 20 moving average here in the bullish band, which is a good sign. So from here to the top is roughly 3.4%. And there's where you should expect um, a pullback in this market. Sorry. So let's look at uh, Facebook. Facebook has had really difficult times. Um, but the 150 is basically the bottom of this market. So... Uh, whatever happens, I think most of the bad news about Facebook is technically over. Donald Trump is off of Facebook. How many followers of his will follow him? Um, well, that is to be seen. Um, in my my view, I think when he is basically out of the White House, he will basically be a forgotten man, and most people will basically forgot that he used Facebook and so on, and things will become relatively normal. Um, and so on. So uh, um, I think Facebook will outlive Donald Trump. Um, that's what basically I think. And considering that most uh, major investor, investors in the world, like top, top investors, have Facebook as number one in their portfolio, that should be saying a lot. If they are the ones that basically are... Um, driving these markets most of the time and if they invest in this company then that should be a very bullish shine for uh, for for the future so i think that we're going to see a rally i don't know in the next week probably not there's going to be a continuation of uh, this news that donald trump has been um, banned from facebook now he's done uh, he's banned from from twitter and most and instagram and so on and so on uh, which also is Facebook, but uh, and also other platforms. Basically, he's trying to go on other platforms, and, and as soon as he does that, they're basically banning him. So that news will continue. Probably, if it if it's over, 
uh, when the market opens again, then it will probably be bullish. But if it continues next week, then we'll just see a continuation of this uh, back and forward. So at this point, we're trading at 267. And I would expect this market to easily go to these very highs. That is why, that's why I'm holding on to my Facebook and considering I was basically buying more. Because that's, a trend, that's a trade of roughly 11.67%. And uh, that is a very good trade. Technical indicators for Facebook are, well, they're mixed and they're very bearish. So, and the MACD here, we're way underneath the zero, which is basically a negative sign. It's a bearish trend and we are underneath the signal line as well. The CC, RSI is flat, the CCI is under zero and close to 100, minus 100, which also is very bearish. And stochastic is basically underneath the signal line, almost crossing the red line here, which is also indicates bearish momentum. We did cross the bottom of the bullish band. So this was an indication that this was going to rally. It did rally up towards the middle here, which is the 20 moving average, then broke down again outside of the bullish band and then rallied again. So this hammer here could be a sign that it could be a sign of a bullishness that people saw the price getting back close to the 100 moving average and then started buying again. That is most likely the reason why we saw this increase. But we need to get through these moving averages here. Until we, when we start trading um, three, four candlesticks uh, above the 50, that's when you know that we are going to continue this uptrend in this, this stock. So let's look at Tesla. So, well, um, usually you say this is basically stupid money getting into Tesla. Uh, basically pure speculation that is going into this stock at this point. We have tried this so many times and uh, I'm also guessing people have earned a lot of money trading this. They also have been burned significantly uh, buying it at this stage. And at this point, we are at 83 in the RSI. In the Bulliger band, we are significantly outside. And uh, one worrying sign for, for this stock is that basically the stochastic is running around, it's basically uh, making a runoff here, crossing the signal line. And that is probably the one of the first indication that we are going to head back towards the middle of the Bulliger band. So that is an enormous drop. So. That is basically a drop from 880 all the way to the middle of the Bollinger Band. That's a drop of 21%. And to be very honest, that's, that is not oversaturating. That is the previous highs here. And, and uh, this just went parabolical. And has done it several, several, several times in the past. We can just go all the way back. Every single time uh, uh, this stock has done it, it was right here. We can also look at the Bollinger Band and we can see when we went outside, it was right there. That is the same area, uh, basically there, when it, break, it broke all the way down towards the middle of the Bollinger Band, a fall of roughly 22%. We have another one here. When we were outside, it fell also to the middle or the bottom of the Bollinger Band, which is the 50, that is 28% fall. So when I say that we may fall uh, from this towards the uh, to the middle of the bullish band, that is not oversaturating. That is the 20, 20, 19 percent or twenty percent at this uh, current point. When you're considering, we had this in the past. We had a fall of roughly. Uh, this was a fall of roughly 30, uh, 34 percent. Then this is not a very big fall. So. People that are buying here are technically uh, playing with fire. We are going to see a pullback towards the, the middle. In worst case scenario, we'll see a pullback towards the bottom of the Bollinger Band. So that the middle of the Bollinger Band is 21%. The bottom of the Bollinger Band is 37%. That's just underneath the 50 moving average. So this is a stock that is going to increase in value. Uh, the reason why I think that this move, like the last four days, were this was a move of roughly 21%. That was just pure speculation. Absolutely, completely pure speculation. And uh, and um, the same goes for NEO stock. 
They should be falling, but they are increasing. Um, at some point, the big institutions are basically going to put the, pull the plug on this and it's going to fall and then they start buying again. So that is most likely what's going to happen. I am going to wait when it falls towards the 20 because this is a stock that is it's going to go higher. It's just going to continue to go higher. When people say that it's going to be in the thousands, yes, it most likely will because people are buying this. They're not looking at its finances. If you're looking at look at the traditional analysis for a PE ratio, for example, for Tesla, it, everybody should be running far away from this company because they're technically buying a car uh, for hundreds and thousands of dollars and they're getting... Um, I don't know, a Lada in, in return. That's basically the trade you are doing when you buy a Tesla stock at this current stage. Um, the stock does not reflect the value of the company whatsoever. So let's look at Google. So Google had a really good run to the upside. I think that we're going to see a pullback at this point. Uh, we can see that we are way outside of the Bollinger Band. So if we have a pullback towards the middle, that's just um, that's a fall roughly 2.9%, uh, then we can continue this rally. That is uh, also just above the 50 moving average, so that would make um, a lot of sense. Otherwise, technical indicators are very bullish for Google. If we continue another day um, outside of the bullish rack, even go higher, then we're just going to see another one of these falls, similar to this fall. And I'd rather see a uh, pull back towards the 20 and then a re-entry for this market and then I will target these highs of run, and that's a trade of roughly 5%. Otherwise, technical indicators are very bullish. There's still a room to the upside in this market. So Netflix. So this is one of the big tech giants that is also like a sleeping giant at this current stage, similar to Amazon. Nothing really happens here. Um, so we're at, we touched the bottom just above the 150 moving average. We rallied up towards the 20 exponential, that's 3%, then broke down towards 100. And now we rallied and we're just at the 40 exponential moving average. Um, this stock will most likely get a rally up towards the top of the bullish band. And that's a trade of roughly 6.27% uh, before it, it um, goes back down. There's a lot of room to the upside. So if I were to pick two of the best buys from uh, from these tech stocks, it will be it will be basically Facebook. If now it would be Netflix, I'm sorry. It will be Facebook and it will be Amazon. So those three stocks are basically the the stocks that I think are going to um, increase in value um, the next week. While the other ones, I think they are going to fall back a little bit. Facebook, uh, uh, Apple is a 50-50. It could, yes, go to uh, these highs. That is possible. It is also possible that it will fall back and then go higher. But Tesla, I would stay away from. And, um, and uh, Microsoft is kind of 50-50. Um, Probably. I think it has been a lot of choppiness here, but Netflix, Facebook, Amazon, those are probably the ones that are going to get the most gain next week. So, hope you find this helpful. You're welcome to support our channel by subscribing. Hit the like button and the bell button to see our newest videos, and you're welcome to join us over at Patreon. The link is down below. Good luck, and thank you very much.